So we move on to final preparations. And it tells us what we're going to do here to create the temporary system. Uh, but first of all, we need a user to work within that temporary system because we're working on a host system rather than do stuff as root, we could trash the system. <clears throat> it's safer just to create a new user called LFS and use that user to build a temporary system. Now, um, occasionally you might see me grab hold of all the commands and paste them all in one, in one go. It's not a good idea to do that, especially if you're uh, new to Linux from scratch because you need to check for any errors that might occur after each command. So it's best to copy and paste each of these individually um, and then look for errors after each command. This is actually, although it's several commands, it forms one command because the for and the done go together. So you can copy all those three lines. And the same with the case and the ESAC, it's all one command um, with nested commands in the middle. Um, like I say, you could copy and paste that, but unless you're very disciplined and go through and check, you, it's easy to miss any errors that might occur. So it is best to do commands individually. Also, when you're copying and pasting, ensure that you actually copy and paste all of the uh, command. For example, if I did that, then I'll be creating a directory called tool, and that would cause further commands down the line to fail because they'll be referring to a directory called tools, which doesn't exist. So it's worth you know, making sure that what you're copying, what you're highlighting, is, is the whole lot. So we've created the tools directory there. As I say, I'll be just be going through, not reading or commenting as I specifically need to. Um, but this tools is where we create the temporary tool system uh, to build the final Linux from scratch system. Now we're going on to adding the Linux from scratch user. So we're adding a new group to the host system called LFS. And we add the LFS user here. And you can see there the book gives an indication of what the switches do, what the command, the options do. Now we're going to set a password to the LFS user so we can log into it. And that's been created. And then change the ownership of some of the directories we've created to LFS so LFS can write into them. and also change the ownership of the sources to LFS, so LFS has got access to them. Um, yes, I've seen this before, uh, what it mentions here, I think, well, I think it might be actually one of the older Endeavor OS versions used to do this. Um, if you run this command and this next command, let's run it actually. No, it doesn't do it anymore. I'm pretty sure it was Endeavor OS. If it comes back um, as if the command's gone into the background, then just run the foreground command FG and you'll get the prompt up as I've got here. Uh, I'm not sure why that happens, but um, yeah, just fix it with the. FG and as, as it says here if you don't get the LFS home directory which we have got it's just got the host name as well <clears throat> then you need to run the FG command next thing we're going to do is to set up the environment so we create a bash profile with some configuration and a bash RC command also with some configuration in there as well and then there's uh, uh, yeah all those commands and options are uh, mentioned there so um, if you want to know about that you can read that there's uh, another command here that should be run as root 
and it's to disable something to do with bash that can interfere with uh, the way that the um, operating system is built so we need to run that as root so what I'm going to do is do control D to log out run that command and you can see it has actually done something so this is a distribution where that file is exists and it would interfere with the build so it's important to run that so I'm going to go back into LFS and well because I've just gone back into LFS it's picked up those changes you can see the prompt has changed to what it was previously but um, we can run this source command anyway and it won't actually do anything because it's already sourced all those new changes one thing I am going to do is to modify the bash RC to add in um, an option actually on the next screen is it I think yeah on the next screen about the SBUs which are standard build units and it explains how it's a very rough way of gauging how long uh, packages will take to build for the particular system you're building um, it's not particularly accurate but it's more of a guide than anything else so Basically what you do is you time the first package, how long that takes to build, and if it's say 10 minutes, then you know that your um, standard build unit is 10 minutes. One standard build unit is 10 minutes. So if you then go onto another package which says it takes two SBUs, that means it takes twice as long as your uh, SBU. Your SBU is 10 minutes, so twice 10 is 20, so you've got an idea that it would take approximately 20 minutes to build so that's what that's about so this is the bit that I'm going to modify um, the uh, bash RC file with um, and this uh, tells make to compile to issue four parallel jobs at a time when we're compiling so let's edit um, right so it's got a US keyboard here at the moment so I've just got to I didn't even need to, need that anyway, so I need to edit the dot bash rc file. Oh, is that because we're in? Let's try nano. Oh yeah, we've got nano. Okay, not too au fait with nano actually. No, right nano. Uh, dot bash rc yeah what I do is go down the bottom here and type in export and what I've just copied oh don't need to type export that's part of what I've just copied so that's what I'm copying in and what this does it makes the make flags environment variable available to the LFS user whenever we log into it so um, do control x and yes to save that and press enter and now I do need to run the source command because if I do echo make flags you'll see it's not set but if I run the source command on bash profile and rerun echo make flags you can see it's now been set so that allows parallel compila compilation when make is running Next thing we've got a bit about test suites. Um, if you want to quickly go through and build, um, you don't need to run the test suites. If you want to do it properly, you do want to run the test suites because the test suites will identify any problems with the build. It could be that you build a package and it hasn't built well or you've missed a command or something subtle. The package still builds but it's built incorrectly and unless you run the test suites you're not going to know whether that package has actually built successfully or not um, as the in you know in the way that the developers intended it to behave so my recommendation is to always run the test suites even though it probably doubles the time it takes to build um, the system um, unless you've got a good reason or you're confident that you've built before running test test suites um, I would say don't avoid building them always always build the test suites just so you know 
uh, that things are going to work. If you're going to use Linux from scratch as a, a day-to-day operating system, then definitely run test suites because you're not going to know. You're always going to have that doubt in your mind if something misbehaves or something keeps crashing. Was it because something that I built didn't build correctly or you know, it didn't pass the test correctly? It may have built apparently correctly because it finished building with no errors, but um, is it behaving correctly? 